welcome to Big Bird's Adventures. This was the big one, Big Venture. <laughs> so we're gonna learn processes today. This is at home. Hemodialysis. Hemodialysis. Mm -hmm. So usually you do this in the clinic. Yeah. Kind of what you did back in the day, but my dad and mom made a room in their house it looks like a clinic. Yeah. So, those are the floors. Man. But yeah, this this is the uh, the bird clinic here. Wowzers. And I have asked for permission to mm -hmm. film this procedure. So we all we all know about HIPAA, and I'm not trying to violate anybody's HIPAA rights here. Okay. I'll just put that out there before the comments start because I know they're coming. We've got a beautiful day here in Tennessee. Look at that green grass. And there's the Jeepers getting a rest after its long travel from Utah. And this is my family's home. We've got a closet full of goodies there. Look at Wow. I mean, this is what you're expecting a doctor's office. Just saying. Even with the TV, the clock, the professional over here. Yeah. Your uh, dad does better at this, but. <laughs> so this is our first time together on YouTube. This is my mom. Hi. We'll leave names and all that out of it. <laughs> Just for protection. But. Yeah, this is the machine right here. They got key cards. Um, yep. we'll, we'll look at those more when the procedure starts. But she's just prepping the machine. Yeah. So, yeah. Look how much fun that is. But yeah, you don't have to travel back and forth to the clinic. Normally it would be, what, every other day you would go to the clinic or would it be daily? Every other day. Every other day, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to do three days a week at the clinic. Whew. And they do four days a week on? Five, five days a week at home. Yep. Five days a week at home, yep. Mm -hmm. Get a couple of days off. I think it was, what, Thursday and Sunday? Mm -hmm. So Thursday and Sunday they take a break. But it's it's quite a bit of a, a procedure. Um, yeah. So dialysis is basically when your kidneys fail right to filter out mm -hmm. the body stuff mm -hmm. and yep she's got to concentrate she's got all this mechanical stuff to do. Yeah. I didn't get all the air out of the get the air out see it's all technical wow but after doing it I got the professional here. Does he have to just turn this on with the clicker? Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, it turns on. <clears throat> so yeah, when when they get going, I will definitely wear gloves just to be part of the cleanliness. But yeah, we'll bring it back when we get some time. We unclamp. We gotta unclamp the green and then unclamp this green. We don't want to do anything with these yet because once you clamp them. You can't unclamp them. Oh no. <laughs> Without tools. <laughs> We're gonna get that all unclamped there. And then yellow to yellow. This is for our drain line. Clamp. And clamp it here. And then we unclamp it. We leave the white ones clamped. The saline the saline clamps have to stay clamped. But the green and the yellow come out. And you got your instructional cards here just in case you need to review. Mm -hmm. drain line so it drains that away 
Gonna have good lighting in here. Mm -hmm. The patient comfortable, that's what that chair is about. Yep. Now we have to set our, what we want to pull in volume of fluid. And we're just gonna pull 1.1 1. 1 today because we don't want to tank our blood pressure. <laughs> It's like a little procedure here. It's just gotta get the blood, big gloves for dad. <laughs> big gloves. Oh, this a chut? Alcohol prep pads. Needle for our heparin. syringes to find the lines with. You get two, about me three, and you get two dialysis needles. One for the venous, one for the arterial. And this is a, pretty much a daily thing. Daily thing. Yep, daily thing. That's right. And it's what keeping is, me healthy. <laughs> and what is it, if you don't mind sharing, what is it that you have? I have e ESRD and stage renal disease. Yep. ESRD. Mm -hmm. For y'all who are wanting to know, crazy, crazy. Yeah, um, dad's been working on, working in dialysis centers for probably 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, just happens, how long have you had this now? A couple, three, three years? Mm -hmm. So. Um, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> time flies, man. But many blessings and many lessons and all kinds of stuff around. But you know, I walked in here the other day and I was my jaw just hit the floor because I was like, I had no idea that this was going on at home. Like, that's huge. So, but we're gonna watch it today, and they they're allowing me to watch it. So. I'll try to edit some sensitive information and and stuff that probably shouldn't be on YouTube. But other than that, I think this is freaking awesome. And hopefully you guys get the same experience that I had the other day. Because the miracles of medicine is literally keeping her alive using this here. And it's more convenient at home. And, you know, it could be, it could be hard to travel too. So, but we'll bring you back. I can get it. It's just that instead of hitting those check boxes like they want you to do, mm -hmm. I put a note at the bottom that says half of these need to be okay, 172 right. because we're infusing mm -hmm. three days a week. So can they make them like that? Yeah. If you go in that closet right there, look to your right, there's a set of boxes that say 170 on them. Oh, okay. And another set of boxes that say 172. Sure. The 172 has an extra line here that you use to plug that infusion pump in with. Yeah. Cool. Because we have one that's on the to help with this calcifolaxis that's going on. So, again, you go in the supply closet. Uh, second shelf down on the right hand side, there's some little blue boxes. Mm. These blue boxes? Yep. It, that's called sodium dialsulfate. Dialsulfate. Yeah. Dialsulfate. And we need two of, two of those vials per treatment. Oh. That would be another time to watch, but you guys won't keep being here when we start that. We're starting until Monday. Oh, new treatment. Just watching the dad prep all of that. And that's an existing treatment, right? Today I'm gonna wear gloves just um, somewhat like you guys. Oh, these are damn. Those are nice gloves. They're called nitrile. You knew that, right? Yes, sir. But my viewers might not know. These are nitrile gloves. 
Wow, they feel really cool. Yeah. I got some latex somewhere, but yep. latex aren't quite as good. Allergic, allergic to latex. Or my body's just being a wuss. Yeah, we don't like the latex ones. We always make sure that Mary is non-latex. And this is the prep. Yeah. What it takes right here. Look at this. Oh, no. So what are you doing, Dad? Preparing tape. You have to yeah. take these pieces of tape. You have to bend the both ends over. The reason you have to bend the ends over is so when you stick that to somebody's arm, mm -hmm. instead of having to dig around, oh, yeah. you can just lift the tab up. Lift it right up. When we pre-make those, you can see I put four pieces of tape right there. Give me just a minute and I'll show you what I did that for. Okay. And you always fold over the tape so that when you go to pull it back oh. up. That's clever. We have this little fancy one for paper tape. It's broke. They don't make them anymore. So I had to feel <laughs> uh, But what happens on this one is with paper tape, you put this in here and push down on it and it cuts the tape oh, for yeah. you. Okay. So now we got four pieces right here. She's gonna count out um, seven. And I'm gonna count out seven. I'm gonna take two. Hold this end over. Put that right in the middle, and we're gonna put that right there. And we're gonna no do another two. Do another one of these. Put that in the middle. Put it right here. And we're gonna take one. Do that again. Take one more. And on the last one you can cheat and do this. Put that right here. You'll see in a little while when we're sticking the needles in our arm. We'll use, we'll use these two when we get started. We'll use these two when we finish. Pretend I didn't drop that on the floor. Breaking these things out of the packages. It's a drag, <laughs> it's a real drag. So here's what I do. Just grab it right here and push it through the paper. Oh. Instead of trying to, cause there's a little thing you can eventually get to right here. <laughs> it's easier to just push it through the paper. And I'm gonna mix the trash. This is heparin. Trisha can tell you what that does. It's a blood thinner, uh, so it keeps the lines from clotting. We put it in to the, we have, we have two ports here. Well, they're not ports, they're actually in my skin. Um, part of the fistula, we have the, um, the arterial access and the vascular access. Put the heparin in and the vascular access at the beginning of treatment. Um, and that way, and then it, and it, you know, it does its bit through the whole system, so it stays in there keeps the lines from clotting or causing any issues with blood clots. So, so when you're loading a needle, um, you have to aerate the medication into the needle. So you preload the needle, we're doing two milliliters. And then you wipe off the top with alcohol. Yep. These alcohol pads are way bigger than what we used to use. Then I preloaded this, punch that through, push this in, it'll inhale it most of the way.
And most of this stuff, if you flick it, it'll push all the air to the top. And you'll see what we do with that in a minute. numbs my skin so that the needles don't hurt when they go in. Okay. I keep it on for about an hour before treatment. There's two kinds of lidocaine. Mm -hmm. There's regular lidocaine, just straight lidocaine, four to five percent. Uh, it doesn't work quite as well. Um, so my doctor prescribes lidocaine prilocaine, two and a half percent each, and it just completely makes the arm completely numb. For about, once I take it off, it's numb for about 30 to 45 minutes. So it's plenty of time, even if we have issues with sticking the needles or anything like that, um, it's plenty of time to, to still get them in without causing pain. So. Bottom one's the arterial, the top one's the venous. So I don't have gloves on yet. We do the first two alcohol wipes with no gloves. And then he gloves up for the balance of it. And then we do another, an additional alcohol wipe um, after he's gloved up. We could give this video to Marion okay. so she wouldn't have to come out and do a home visit. <laughs> <laughs> she, our nurse comes out once a year. Okay. to do a home visit to check and make sure that we're still following all the protocols and but we're their star patients so. and she'll watch your procedure too uh-huh she'll watch me she'll watch us do the whole thing so i'm gonna tear this open with no gloves on okay because everything in here is covered yeah. and you, the, ne the needles have caps on it anything that's going to touch my skin is covered when you pull it out but you figure this is all dirty yeah, for packing. So now where it says sanitize your hands, I've already washed my hands. So I put these gloves on. I, have, I skipped that page because these are really Yeah. Yeah, there are instructions here. That's some parts. I gotta do that again. There are instructions here. <laughs> Have you got a picture of these? You can see there's four distinct dots. And we call those one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's two, actually two different methods for this. We're on three. Okay. There's actually two different methods for this. There's what they call the buttonhole method, where you go into the same place every yeah. time. Um, while it's easier really to do that and you build almost a callus right here through the lidocaine, it's also not as good on the access because it, it can it can clot it can clot a lot easier. So, go into three. so we know where these are, so we know where her vein is. You'll see when I do this one we'll actually have to turn it a little bit because we know the vein goes this way. So we're in three. <coughs> That's three, right? Mm -hmm. Did you guys scream? <laughs> just kidding. It's back there. Yeah, just kidding. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big needle. <laughs> and we're in. And usually once he gets in there, he can kind of feel it. It'll kind of take the needle. Yeah. And he feels it and he goes all the way into the hilt on the needle. And then you can see it pulsing. That's where we know the, the initial, when you initially hit it, it's called the flash, which most people, anybody that's had their blood drawn has probably heard that term. Um, but it, the important thing is that it keeps pumping. 
If it's stopped, that means we've either run into a, the wall of the artery oh, okay. or we've got a clot. So we have to, that's why we have to make sure it's still moving when we put it in there. This is called a butterfly. Um, it just keeps holds the needle in place. And you'll, you'll cross it over each other. Like that. See how shiny it's got two little circles on it. You see how it's got grips on the other side. So when you push this up, see the slot, they go together. Hmm. And, and that's how you hold on to it. Helps to steady it. This one we know that the um, we know that the vein is deeper than the artery, so we have to stand this up. And there's an angle we go at. Good. Mm -hmm. push that needle out. Oh, yeah. You can also see one or another reason why we bend these tapes over. I can drag my fingernail across this. And know where the next one is. And know where starts. the next oh, one okay. is. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Make it more efficient. Yeah. Another butterfly, right? Mm -hmm. Another butterfly. And this is a place where you can breathe. Mm -hmm. Once you got that far. I do this a little different than most people told us to. I like to just tear these off to get started. You can do them one at a time, but the tips are covered, so yeah. you're not going to get any. This is a different, a different syringe. We're not really happy with that syringe. You see, it's got little things that you have to take off. And on the inside of it, it's like ridged, and so it doesn't. It's not quite as smooth pulling it in and out. If you, All right. If you grab that and feel. Do you feel a little bump? Oh, yeah. See how it bumps at the end? The, the other ones didn't do that. Huh. All right, so we're, this is priming. This is called priming the needle. So we're gonna prime the uh, venous access first. Ooh, it's a little slow. A little slow. We'll see how it, we may have to lift it just a little bit. Yeah. Sorry. And, this. and then we check it. Yeah, we check it with the syringe to see as long as it's going in and out smooth. Good. Can't really feel it. It's a little tight. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go ahead and administer the heparin. And you need to expect that it's going to be a different result every time, even if it's the same, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's the whole procedure here, right? Yeah, because sometimes we have to take gauze and put it up underneath the needle and get a little bit of a different angle on it. So there could you'll be roadblocks every yeah. time. Yeah, you'll see that process here in a minute. So I'm, we've got, we clamped it here to change this. Now I'm going to unclamp this, stand this up, tap it. You can see the air bubble. 
air bubbles at the top. That's where we want it to be. And then I'm going, I'm not going to push this heparin in yet. We're going to pull the okay. blood into it. Just to make sure we don't have any blood down in the line anywhere either. There. And then I'm going to tap it again. That will make sure all the air is at the very top. And then good. push good. that in until and then clamp it again. There have been a few times where we haven't clamped it and you have blood everywhere. Oh. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, so we've done the venous. Now we're going to do the arterial. Same thing. And can you okay. explain venous and arterial just one more time? Um, the arterial carries the blood out okay. of the body and the venous the, is where the blood goes back into the body. It's all one fistula in there, yeah. just two locations in there. In and out. But the fistula is a vein and an artery fused together. So uh, and in your body, your veins carry the blood out or through the body. The, through it, the in, yeah, one of them is oxygenating as it's doing the process. So they're, bo they're the both involved. The bright red blood is oxygenated. Mm -hmm. The darker blood is it's not. Non. Okay. Yeah, so. So, okay. Same thing. That's good. Nope, you're good. All right, so this is another place where you can breathe. We got all that done. Now, you don't want to breathe for too long. You don't want to have it. If you sit here for too long, you could get a clot a it, in yeah. there because it's not moving. So that is one thing that I know about is right. the... Um, anyway, I was going to do a medical term here, but <laughs> the platelets in the yeah. blood will clot quicker when outside the blood and cooling mm -hmm. down. It's not cooling down, but... Right. Yep. All right, clamp both clamps. On the red line, under the saline pipe. And then, and then you know, all this. It, it's not nearly as complicated as it looks. Yes. Disconnect yep. and attach a clean 10 ml syringe. Okay. 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 And what we're doing here is Trisha's giving instruction from the manual mm -hmm. to the tech, which is dead. I'm going to draw saline into that. And at the end of the treatment, you'll see what we did that. Okay. Connect the red line to the patient's arterial. And the patient. <laughs> patient's mom. <laughs> and clamp. Right. Clamp both clamps on the blue line under saline bag. There's a little tangled up. Disconnect and attach clean 10 ml syringe. I noticed that too when I was doing this snap and tap, but I didn't, I'm not as good at fixing it as you were. Wire management, right, Deb? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay. We're almost ready to start. So I this whole time you saw me stacking stuff yep. in one place. Just so I can reach over here and pick all this stuff. these lines you want to sort them out and the blue line will be shorter because it's on the inside so I need to pull these just a little bit clamp this the back side of it around the hose the front side of it you find the seam in her shirt and then what you want is you want the red line here and the blue line here. Move these out of the way just a little bit. You take one piece of tape. Okay. 
tape that to her. These are open. You're ready to go. She's gonna read me some notes. I'm just gonna build up her right here. Wow, look at that. She's hooked up. In terms of eyelizer, is upright in a filter folder and no lines are pink? Yes, upright. No lines are pink. This is a little sloppy right here. Sorry. Um, this. <laughs> this needs. We'll talk to the nurse who set this up. Needs to go. Don't you worry, ma'am. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I put these under here. And confirm all plants are open except both saline plants. And saline plants So you got clamps here, saline clamps must be closed. Here are your saline clamps. There's two of them. This line goes straight to the saline bag. In the event she starts passing out or something, one of the things we can, um, great. Um, one of the things you can do is you can add saline to her. And that's what these clamps are for. So they're closed because they don't want, you don't want saline going in there. For now. This is a drain line. It has to be open. And these are the lines to connect everything. That you open that clamp and whatever clamp that the machine is hooked up to. Make sure they're all open. She says she's a little woozy. Um, did you drink anything yet? All right, so now she's already set these numbers. We've got everything set. Read on. Push the treatment key. You sure? Uh-huh. Just go on the pure flow that starts the treatment. So the pure flow is this machine down here that stores the dialysis. Right. And record blood pressure. Notice that blood starts running down. It'll go in the machine, it'll go through, you'll see it start coming up in this filter. this little block of gauze. It's still just a little high. This is real life, people. Yeah. And thank you guys for letting me video this. Uh -huh. Look at this. This is what blew me away yesterday. Wow. The arterial uh, number can't go over 250. Mm -hmm. Can I record that part? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to catch any. And the Venus, the Venus pressure can't go over 300. Okay. It's actually not horrible. This is where they're mm -hmm. monitoring you know, all the numbers if you wanted to know. And then the, the has it book. And once we're, once we're up to our blood flow rate of 350, we raise the dial as high as it'll go, which is 12.6. Mm -hmm. 
leave that below here. Uh, we could leave it at 6.8, but it would take, as you can see, it would take four hours, 35 minutes Ooh. to run the dialysis. But if we set it at 12.6, which is how they've got it programmed to go, then we now Here's cut it down pump. to two hours and 20 minutes. Yep. Now Arterials down. at 205, that's not horrible. Mm -hmm. It should be a little lower. Yeah. And it should Probably be at 2 hours and 27 minutes. Your mm -hmm. venous, which is a U. Oh. And then E is the. E. Um, e is the effluent pressure. Effluent pressure. So here's your arterial. And there's the amount of time left on the. And then there's your venous. So it went from like 4 hours to 2 hours? To 2 hours mm -hmm. and 20 minutes. Okay. All right. And then uh, a couple of things we have to do after. One is for safety. You remember I said you need one gauze at the beginning. At the beginning. That's what this is. It's just for safety. If that thing starts bleeding, at least there's something there to catch it. She's in pretty good shape. We've given her her pillow. She normally gets cold right after we start. And uh, that's what the blanket's for. I always try to put the blanket in the same place every time so that if we picked anything up off the floor, it's always at the same end of the blanket. And this is important for customer care. Uh, yeah. And comfort, because the body the body's working hard right now, blood out. We talked about this yesterday. It's, mm -hmm. And it's nothing comparable, but when I overeat or I eat a lot, all the blood goes to the stomach to help digest and you get cold. Mm -hmm. And all her blood is going in through this process right here. Mm -hmm. and so, and so, so we talked about dialysate just a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's six liters of diet. Six, 60. 60. 60 liters of dialysate in this tank right here. Oh, look at that. I'll show you how that starts out. Um, and there's a heater in there. Uh, we, when we first got the machine, it was set really low and she was always cold. Yeah. And then we learned that there's a heater in here that warms the food up. And it'll warm it to 98. Yeah. So that it warms the blood as it's going, you know, keeps the blood at the same temperature as what it was when it left your body. So let me show you about dialysis. Okay. So the dialysis starts out. And then every other day, I have to come in here and load that in that drawer. And it takes seven hours for that machine to make that tub full of dialysate out of this. Oh, okay. We do that every other day. Every other day. Every other day. Every other day. Whew, gotta be attentive. And you always have your safety buckets. What is this thing? Is this a spinner? Yeah. Yep. A centrifuge. A centrifuge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. This is where we keep the saline. Yeah. We have to we have to pull blood samples once a month. And we just do that here. They taught us how to spin the tubes and everything and then we ship them the next day to the lab overnight. When when requested or do you have a time how many it's, it's the first Monday of every month. First Monday. And then they do a test on your blood at the lab. Mm -hmm. Cool. They fit. A couple of cheetos. All right. Well, we're we're gonna call this on this video. Okay. Good job, puppy. And hey, mommy. Go so now. Right. <laughs> we're gonna take her apart. So after two and a half hours, of we're gonna take it go all the way the opposite way. Look how red they are. They're real dark. Mm -hmm. Both of them are dark red. Yeah. So that a lot, means a lot of blood. Option that is blood, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this. 
so one thing if the machine ever quits in the middle yeah one of the, the important things is to get her blood back in her yeah uh, you'll see us in just a minute you'll see us clear the blood you see there's a lot of blood in there oh yeah you'll see the machine will clear that blood and put it back in Trisha here in just a minute so we uh, and we take things pull off the emergency pads, right? Yeah. yeah. And then pull this clip off. Okay. Lay these lines out here. I hang these clips up there. And we need the cards. And then uh, we use these cards at the end. Trisha can tell you what they say, but we always read them anyway. When treatment has ended, you will see three sets of zero and a 350. Sanitize hands. Make sure there's still 300 ml of saline in the bag. Remove the tape clamp, hold in the lines, which we did. Fill the syringe under the red clamp on the saline bag. We do this in advance. Remember when I yep. plug that in? I do it when I hook it up and put it on it now. Press stop on the cycler. This is right the back. cycler. You want me to do it? Yep. Yeah, push do it, it again. until it beats. There, there you go. go. Push stop on the pure flow. Right down here. Whoop. Get around the blood there. <clears throat> you'll notice it put 277 here. Mm -hmm. um, you'll notice that they asked us to make sure we had 300 up here. Okay. That's why. That's why. So you're about to see that go down. Yeah. The countdown is we're clearing it. Remove the saline syringe from under the red clamp, which he always does out of order, but that's all right. It doesn't bother <laughs> me too much. Um, clamp both red arterial needle clamps. Disconnect the red arterial line from the needle and connect the saline syringe to the needle. Okay. We did that before. Okay. Connect the red arterial line to the red clamp under the saline bag. Just right back where it came from. Open both red clamps. Press add fluid on the cycler. So we're going to press add fluid. You can see that what we've done is we've connected this line mm -hmm. to, to this bag of saline. Okay. So I'm going to press add fluid. And then using the saline syringe to flush the arterial. So you'll see this number start going down. Mm -hmm. Is that time? It, no. It's the Slow. amount of fluid. So hear the pump? Yep. Now if you'll watch these two lines. See how this line's already clear? clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what we're gonna do here, this blood right here, we're gonna use saline to, to push this back. blood. So you'll notice I pull to make sure there's no air in there. Mm -hmm. And then we very slowly push this. What that does is that clears this little short line. When you do dialysis in center, the machine does all of oh, that, yeah. but when you do it at home, it, it doesn't, it can't do air, all of it, so we have to actually manually clear oh, this one. That's crazy. And then clip that. And I remember in the clinic, the, the popping in the motors and the pumps and the, mm -hmm. you can, and you can see where they're spinning. Yeah. So you can see, see oh, how the dialyzer is coming how, down. And see how the dialyzer is clearing out? Yes. It was full of. Yep, it's getting cleared. This thing was bright red when we came in here. Yep. See, um, the lines are already clear now. Yep. Oh, yeah. And the saline bag is empty now pretty quick. Yep. So that was 277 milliliters of saline that it just pumped through this process. When rinse back is complete, clamp both blue venous clamps and check blood pressure. And then it's going to ask me for this. Yep. <clears throat> and so saline is basically the same thing they give you when you're dehydrated, right? Mm -hmm. It's just water. Yeah, it's just, they just pump it back into your system. Yeah. yeah, yeah, salt water. Because I've been on a couple of those in my life. 
fluid venous line from the needle and connect the uh, syringe to the needle. Connect the blue venous line to the blue clamp in the saline bag. Just putting it back where it came from. Turn off the cycler and remove the needles. And then if you want to A lot of times him, we forget to do this. Because yeah. you don't have to. It's not something that they train us to do. Yeah. We typically will do it just because of my blood pressure thing. I want to get as much of this blood and fluid back in me. Oh, yeah. And we account for all of this. Like, if, if I weigh beforehand and it tells me that I need to pull off, everything's in kilos, half a kilo, we add the 300 plus these two. We add another half a kilo to that number so that we're not gaining weight. Yeah, what, that's what I was going to ask. So what is your max? Like, what can you go? What's your max above? You know, you can add fluid to your body, mm -hmm. but how much can you add? Well, they want us to stay at or below our dry weight. Okay. And so um, if I'm starting to gain, which we did there for a while. Oh, wow. I was up to about 110 kilos. Oh. And we, we kept trying to pull it down. So finally, Marion just bumped my dry weight up because we, it, we figured out that it was actually real weight and not. Mm. But you know, we've been working really hard on dropping weight. And so now I'm back at 108, 108.5. So. And that's um, milliliter, milliliters? Uh, kilos. Kilos. 108, yeah. Which is about 236. 37 pounds okay. math right now. So then we pull the the our, the venous needle first. I'll wake up the top. When when I'm in when I was in center, we could pull both of these at the same time with the nurses right there. But since it's it's us Con and we're not pros, control. We yeah we do one at a yeah. time. We've so done both of them, but it's just too dangerous. It, yeah, yeah it's only in one, two, three. Um, and so while I'm holding this first one, your dad then breaks the machine down. If you, I don't know if you want to. Get to it. Yeah, we're gonna do that right now. We don't need to make dialysate, or you can watch the process too. But we have to make it. We do it in the morning. It won't matter. Yeah, we do have to make it uh, tomorrow <coughs> or Thursday. Whoops, sorry. But Friday. We have to dialyze early again on yep. Friday because of graduation. So. Oh, that's why the time was different today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Normally we don't need. Well, oh, that's better because I will edit this video today. Yeah. Oh, we oh well, we have used both, so he gets to watch you tear down everything. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I've got your first part. I yeah. came in here when we were doing it. Yeah, and then uh, Ooh. Ooh, normally we'll make the dialysate in the morning, the morning of whatever day I'm going to be doing dialysis. Yeah. Um, but since we have to do it early on Friday, it takes seven hours, so we'll start that dialysate tomorrow, so that it'll be done and ready to go for Friday. So you go through this every time? This, this part, period? yes. This part we go through every time. Oh my! I think they would figure out a way to. We do this part every other time. Yes, this is every other time. And this is the other, right? So you'll see that in there? Oh, yeah, it's empty. See, it's almost empty. So, um, first thing you do is hold this button down and drain or cancel. We say drain. And now it'll pump out whatever's left. It usually is pretty even. You can see there's not much left in there. Yeah. Uh, but we'll let that run for about six minutes. About the time we have to, she's, she's going seven minutes there. Mm -hmm. yeah. About the time I have to put that Band-Aid on, uh, this thing will finish draining. It says paused. I hit stop again. And I get that same menu. More, go, done, stop. So I'm going to say done. Okay. It's going to say flushing. While it's flushing, we we'll come over here. Yeah. Deep poke. Okay. 
And the important thing to do when doing this, do you see where my thumb went? Yeah. Is to just hold a little pressure on there. And then I try to tape it both sides. Okay. Uh, Jazz looks under. Hey, Dad, trip it out real fast and give something exciting to look. Yeah. This I is did that the other day. Do the other Dr. Day. Bert right here. Mm -hmm. He's just he's just out of med school though. So yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. His thumb, he had just put the needle in at the beginning. His thumb got caught on that little hook and, and yanked the needle right out and then blood just went. Oh no. I immediately like I went over and just put the hole, but it was it comes out really fast. So you see here our our Instructions have changed. Yep. Closed blue clamps. This is input. This is where the water comes from. This filter has to be changed out. Um, every so often it'll tell you when. If you look in there, there's a big box about that deep. Mm -hmm. It's got one of those filters in it. Oh, okay. And it goes down the side of the plate. Yeah. Yep. It's a water purifier. So we close the blue clamps. This one is the most important one. Because that's what turns the water off. If I unscrewed this with that open, you'd have water. Lots of it. So you close them all. Then I unscrew this one, leave this part. This is how I know where I am. Because it I left that part. And then I close these two. And unscrew this. That leaves us with the machine. That's what these lines are. And then I say, yes, I did close those blue clamps. It says, give me a minute. And it says, open the door, remove the sack. So you open the door. Pull all that out. Then when you close it, you have to close this first. Close that. So you can see what this is. This is the pump. Yeah. And these ho this hose, see how it's thicker? Yeah. And see how it's kind of got a dent on it? It rumbles it, right? That, that pump, to, to pump things so it's non-contact, it just squeezes this hose. Wow. And that's what causes it to pump. And, and then, that's why it's a more endurable, a durable hose. Yeah. Just get some mileage. And then I fold these different ways every time. We also go through a lot of trash bags. Yeah. Yeah. It's about a trash bag and a half. Woo! So you can see, that's, garbage. it's almost full. I'll probably not do that until we have another, because the next one will only have the cartridge. Yeah. yeah. Then I put these hoses in here. You see at the bottom, that's a, that's a moisture sensor. Oh yeah. So if you get the wet in there, you get a red alarm here and the whole thing shuts down. Okay. So I put a paper towel in here, leave these lines in here just in case. And then when I push this closed, that paper towel catches any water that might drip out of that line. Okay. Pretty smart. And then all we gotta do is wait the time for that. All right, well, I think that wraps it up. All right, sounds it good. Does. Well, thanks you guys for uh, allowing me to document this and um, mom and dad. Yeah, anytime. You're good. Love you.